Okay, last homework problem for this week from chapter six, because we could really only do the first four. Um, the rest of them will be for next week after we learn some more about consolidation and compression indexes. You can see that coming up. Um, but our last problem for this week is a 50 foot diameter oil storage tank um, imposes a maximum loading of 2,500 pounds per square foot onto the ground surface. The soil underlying the tank has a unit weight of 125 pounds per cubic foot. We want to compute the effective vertical stress 25 feet below the tank center if the water table is located 30 feet below the surface. So again, I'm going to go ahead and draw this out um, just so you can get a visual. Uh, not required, but can be helpful sometime when you're thinking about what things look like. So here's our surface. We've got this uh, circular storage tank up here. It's got a 50 foot diameter. So remember that's from the edge to another edge through the center. Um, it's going to give a load of, I'm going to just go ahead and put that at the top. Um, it's a really a pressure of 2,500 pounds per square foot onto the ground surface. So it's really, it's really putting that load down. There's not a load on top of it. Um, and the soil underlying the tank has a unit weight of 125 pounds per cubic foot. So we've got 125 pounds per cubic foot here in this soil. Uh, we want to find the effective vertical stress 25 feet below the center. We'll take this as the center here. And we want to go 25, let's call this at the 25 foot mark. 25 feet below the center of the tank if the water table is located 30 feet. So we'll call this the water table at 30 feet below. So you can already see here with the water table being below um, the point of interest, we're not going to have to worry about subtracting off water. We're not going to have to worry about pore pressure because our effective vertical stress is going to be the same thing as our total stress here because our water is not happening until below. So remember, we're going to have to look at um, some information here from the Boussinesque um, equation and use this chart um, that you have your handout from. So let's look at some of the information we'll need to know to figure that out. We're going to need to know um, our depth of interest, which we call Z on this chart. And in this case, um, remember, we're looking at a 20 foot, 5 foot depth here. And then we're also going to need to know how far from the center line we're interested in. Remember, we're right at the center line, so our x is 0, because that's how far we are from the center line, and we're not any distance at all. And then we're also need, going to need to know our radius um, of our tank here. Remember, the diameter was 50 feet, so the radius is going to be half of that. It's going to be 25 feet. And we know what our gamma is. It's 125 feet. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is find my influence factor here um, from my Boussinesque chart. And when, the way I do that, if you can remember, um, my x over r, my x is 0. And it's always going to be 0 for FEP, so I'm always going to be right down along this line. And remember, this line here is the my z over r ratio. So let's go ahead and find out what z over r is here. In this case, z over r, well, that's just 25 feet over 25 feet. So my z over r is just equal to 1. So when I come onto my chart here and I find this value of 1, I want to see where these lines are um, relative, these, these lines of influence relative to this 1. Well, I see 0.6 would be would be um, a little higher than 1, and 0.7 would be lower than 1. So, and if I look at how close I am between those, I mean, maybe I might say 0.64, maybe a little bit below halfway, 0.65. Let's, from this chart, maybe I would say 0.64. So I'll use that as a possibility um, from the chart. But then I'm also going to go ahead and uh, use the equation, too, just to check it um, and see what I come up with there. When I use the equation, remember this is at the bottom of the page, and this is optional. You don't have to do this. You can just use the chart, but here I plug in R over Z. So let's go ahead and 
plug that in. I'm going to do r over z, but that's just 1 also, right? z over r or r over z. So it's just 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1. So this denominator is going to be interesting because I'm going to cube it. Well, when I cube, uh, that's not right. So it's 1 plus 1. And then I have to cube that. That's 8. Take the square root of it. Do 1 over that and then subtract that from 1. And 5. So, I mean, I got 0.64 the other way, 0.65 from the equation. Really, either way is fine. If you got 0.63, I would accept that too. I think the big thing that I'm looking for on this Busanesque is that you see that it's between 0.6 and 0.7, and you're not saying, oh, it's 0.75 or something like that, you know, that you're reading that the correct way. So either way, either one you want to use, I'll go ahead and use the 0.65. Um, I know that my sigma is going to be my um, Q sub S times I. And that's going to be what's happening at the top. That's my delta sigma. My Q sub S in this case is 2,500 pounds per square foot. And I'm going to go ahead and use that 0.65. But like I said, if you use 0.64, that's fine. Um, so I have 2,500 times 0.65. That's 1,625 pounds per square feet. But I'm not done here yet because I need to also figure out this depth as well. So I'm going to have to add on that strata here that um, we'll call it sigma naught of 125 pounds per cubic feet times 25 feet because remember I don't have to subtract off the water because the water is underneath it so it's 125 times 25 and that gives me 3125 and so in order to find that total I'm just going to add that delta sigma plus my initial state so it's just that 3125 plus the 1625, and that gives me 4750 pounds per square foot. Okay, so to compute that, I looked at that loading stress to start with. Um, the pressure, it's really not on top of that. I should not have drawn that way. It's really coming from that onto the soil. Um, that pressure times the influence factor okay that I found from my Busanesque chart or from my equation and then also I need to look at that geostatic stress what was happening in the soil before that loading even came um, and remember my water was not a factor here because it was below everything I was looking at I add those two up to get that total and remember that's not total stress that's well actually in this case it is because it's it is the same because the water table is underneath but it's really also effective stress this is what we're looking at here all right and that is the end of the chapter six homework problems for this week